So Tulsi Gabbard just put the DNC on notice once again. <laughs> Lord, baby Jesus. <laughs> Let's get this show started. All right, now Tulsi Gabbard just put out a video this morning that a lot of people are going to feel a lot of different types of way about. Um, but I'll play the video and then I'll let you know how I feel about it. Now the 2016 Democratic primary election was rigged by the DNC and their partners in the corporate media against Bernie Sanders. In this 2020 election, the DNC and the corporate media are rigging the election again, but this time it's against the American people in the early voting states of Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Nevada. They're attempting to replace the roles of voters in the early states using polling and other arbitrary methods, which are not transparent or democratic, and they're holding so-called debates, which really are not debates at all, but rather commercialized reality television meant to entertain rather than to inform or enlighten. So in short, the DNC and the corporate media are trying to hijack the entire election process. So in order to bring attention to this serious threat to our democracy and to ensure that your voice is heard, I'm seriously considering boycotting the next debate on October 15th. I'm gonna announce my decision within the next few days. But I just want to say with my deepest and warmest aloha, thank you all again for your support. <laughs> Before I get into the, the analysis of that, <laughs> Tulsi, I know you're watching this right now. Let me just say, supporting you is an emotional roller coaster, woman. <laughs> oh my God. Look, I get it, okay? You got a gray streak in your hair. I got it. So, what? So, just because you got a gray streak, you going to give everybody else the gray streak too? Look at my beard. Everybody been calling me out because they see I get more and more hair in my beard. Okay, every day you post a video. I don't know if you're gonna be standing up for Bernie Sanders. I don't know if you're gonna pray, like defend Joe Biden one day. I don't know if you're gonna make the debates. You're gonna rise in the, the poll even though you don't make the debates. You're gonna wear all white to the DNC. You might destroy somebody's career. Like I don't know what I'm gonna get with you that day, woman. It's pretty cool though, I'm not gonna lie. It keeps me entertained. It's, 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 it, it definitely makes me feel like I'm watching Gladiator. Like, I, that, I, that's what I feel like I'm watching as this campaign unfolds. Because she's in a situation she doesn't really want to be in. Like, because she doesn't, she wants to, she wants to save the world, but it doesn't necessarily mean you want to be president and have the attention all on your face, right? You don't necessarily want that. And, like, even though she don't want to be in a situation, she's like, eh, you know, I'm in a situation. I'm the best at what I do, so I might as well make the most of it. And she, she makes the debates. After, so she makes the first debate, everybody thought she wasn't going to. She's the number one trending topic, uh, or excuse me, she's the number one trending candidate. Of course, she made the second debate too. Destroys Kamala. Doesn't make the third debate. And, and by the way, she was most Google candidate twice in a row. Doesn't make the third debate. It's still the fourth most Google candidate on stage. Rises in the polls in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina. And as we most recently found out, Wisconsin, 6%, makes the next debate, and she's already hit the, qual the donor qualifications for the fifth debate, by the way. So she's already hit the donor qualification for that debate. She makes this debate. We've fought, cussed people out. We yelling at people on Twitter, cussing DNC out, and she's like, you know what? Uh, I think I'm good. <laughs> Are you not entertained? <laughs> oh my god i'm telling you the one thing i can say is that there's always something new in the tulsi gabbard world you should come over here it's more fun but in all seriousness i must admit 
I fully support this decision. Whatever decision she makes, she goes into the debates, she'll crush it. I know it. Uh, but she's also not, she's not stupid, I'm sure. She knows that there's 12 candidates that'll be on that stage and that they didn't split it up on purpose. She knows that she was basically silenced the first one almost completely. Uh, we got lucky, right? Tim Ryan tried to test her gangster. Um, and foreign policy is not the area that you want to test Tulsa's gangster on, especially when she has so much skin in the game in that regard. And then on the second debate, you have uh, 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 Kamala, who was untouchable, but luckily Tulsi wasn't playing that. They, they, you know, they tried to cut her off, and, and she was not having it. That's one thing you will not do is cut Tulsi off when she's not done talking, okay? But it's, it's, it was 10 candidates both of those times. This is going to be 12 candidates, and Tulsi's already kind of number one on the mainstream media's hit list because she destroyed Kamala, and now they have to rely on Elizabeth Warren because Biden is falling in the polls. They have to rely, their last, their last establishment choice is Elizabeth Warren, which basically means if you put her in a situation where she's a nominee, she's gonna, like the Democrats lose again because her demographics are predominantly rich, wealthy white people and older. So that's not gonna work. So Tulsi has put the, the establishment in the dilly of a pickle. And she, when it comes to this type of strategy, she's very good uh, at, at exercising foresight. Now outside, so, so in other words, once again, it would actually hurt her because they'll say stuff like, oh, she, you know, she didn't shine. She wasn't the star of the show. It was this person. I mean, look at what, she was the most Google candidate twice in a row. She exposed Kamala. And nobody was even going to give her credit for that. It had to be Van Jones to step up and give her credit. Like, like literally, Tulsi single-handedly destroyed Kamala. I don't, I don't, and, and they were trying to pretend like it's no big deal. They're still trying to pretend like it's no big deal. They do not forget these things, though. Remember how much money was behind her. So strategically, probably a smart move. You'll make more headlines doing this than you will being part of of that shit show that is the Democratic primary debates. And I even said this last time. There was the people, nobody left that stage in great shape. I didn't feel more, oh, no, I, I can't even lie, y'all. Andrew Yang, I said that at the time. I said, no, that man probably is the one who got away. He, he, he left with the most gained because I said that y'all y'all laughing at that publicity stunt. Look what happened, 10 million in the third quarter. So he left with something in game, or with something gained, but nobody else really did. Everybody else was either hurt or stagnant. Now, outside of all that, the political strategy, the potential political strategy behind this, think about it like this. Tulsi is talking to people every single day. She's on, she, she probably could throw rallies at this point, but I understand I've been to a few, obviously I've been to a few of her town halls and I understand why she, why she's not in rally mode yet because she's busy listening to people. She's busy talking to people. Um, and because this is her, especially cause this is her first national campaign. Um, and she's trying to make the change that works best for every single person in this country. Um, she seem, is seemingly more prone to having conversations rather than yelling at people, bra being braggadocious. And like one of my biggest complaints about Tulsi is one of the things I love about her. She's so humble that she never talks about any of the great stuff she's already done. She never talks about the great legislation she's already introduced. Like she has great crime, criminal justice legislation that people don't even know about. She has great, uh, 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 she has legislation to prevent sexual assault in the military. She worked very hard to help introduce the equality uh, uh, amendment that would make the LGBTQ community, but protect it under the civil rights amendments. Like she was at the forefront of a lot of these things that people don't even know about. Because she's more concerned at hearing what you want and hearing what you need. She's not really as concerned with talking about herself. So when you are hearing over and over again, these primaries are rigged. I feel like my voice is being taken away. These primaries are rigged. I feel like my voice is being taken away. You hear it over and over and over again. Not only 
on uh in, in in person but probably on social media as well like making the making the debates in and of itself was a big middle finger to the establishment that alone was worth all the effort we put into making that debate or helping her make that debate uh, like but her now making it remember what did i say is the 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 thing like if i've ever doubted tulsi which really hasn't been since potentially 2017 like where i was skeptical about her and I, it it's just the healthy dose of skepticism you should have about uh any politician um when i think about the fact that she had everything and all she had to do was shut the fuck up that's all she had to do shut up let Hillary win. You will be the next president, Tulsi. Just let Hillary win. And she was like, you know what? I'm good on that. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be the president if that's... I don't want to be the anointed one. I don't want to be the president. I don't want to be the, you know, the party's favorite if this is what I have to do in order to do that. The CFR, for everybody who keeps, you know, throwing that little thing out there, if you've noticed... The CFR hasn't thrown her any fundraisers, have they? She's made it very clear our, during our interview, they don't really like her all that much. But she was brought into the CFR because she was going to be, you know, that's what they, they, thought, they thought of her as their future neoliberal champion. <laughs> she was a vice chairman of the DNC. Obviously, DNC doesn't like her all that much either. And then now on top of that, you got the CAA and the UTA agencies and all of their representatives or all the people they represent going after Tulsi. It's one big club, clearly. We ain't in it. And neither is Tulsi. The only difference is, though, and this is a difference that I think should be, it's a distinct difference from her and everybody. Like, for her specifically, it's, it's only her that this applies to. We were never in the club. We never made the guest list. It's like you were trying to go into Club Live on Drake night. You were never going to get in, okay? Unless you're an Instagram model. You might have got in if you were an Instagram model. But only if the promoter went to your DMs, okay? But you were never going to get in. We were never on the guest list. We never even had a chance. But Tulsi was already in the club. Tulsi was sitting VIP. Tulsi was sitting beside Drake eating her pineapple pizza vegan pineapple pizza and she looked around she said you know i don't really like this scene and she walked out the club and instead instead stood with us that's the difference this is another example of that she got in but she looked around that stage and she just was like i don't think that I like what are, what are their goals for beyond the debate stage and what are my goals their goals for the most part you know of course with the exception of Bernie and, and, and Yang their goals have been seemingly centered around dragging down other people attacking Trump exclusively pretending as if the Democrats are so much better than the, than the Republicans when they're not looking for sound bites basically it's like the wwe politics that's what it felt like it was like watching smackdown watching pay-per-view you know royal rumble where you know the, the 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 outcome is fixed in the end but at least it's entertaining to watch as the ship goes down and her goals are different she would rather spend the time that it would take to prepare for that particular debate Literally studying. I'm not joking. That's not an exaggeration. She studies a lot. <laughs> she studies a lot. She would rather learn more, listen more, talk to people, interact with the voters. And some would say that's a bad strategy. And you might be able to say that if it clearly hasn't been working. It's, it's been working out for her. It's, it's literally... Like she missed the debate 
rose in the polls and was still top four most Google candidate. I would be willing to bet any amount of money if she doesn't participate in this debate, she will be top two most Google candidate on that debate stage. Bet money. I mean, you can bet against me now. You can bet against me, but let's be honest. The house, no pun intended, has been racking up. I said she'd make the first debate when everybody said, oh, no, she won't. She won't do that. I said she'd be the most Google candidate. She was. I said she start exposing. I said she would expose people. And then I said the last debate, or I, said, I didn't. I said she might not make the next debate because I knew that they were gonna, they weren't gonna release all the polls. Then I said that day that she didn't make the first debate, I said let the K Hive, you know, let the Kamala Harris team celebrate because it's, she's gonna make the next debate anyway, and it's fine. And guess what happened? So all I'm saying is, I'm playing with house money, and the house always wins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although a lot of that is owed to Tulsi because she just she makes it easy. She makes as, as much as it is an emotional roller coaster. Her integrity is consistent. Her values are consistent. Um, I wish I had some of that aloha she had sometimes. Uh, I wish I had some of that patience that she had sometimes. Because she's way nicer than I am about a lot of these things. But hey, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. You know, I don't always see eye to eye with Tulsi. Uh, actually, for the most part, we do see eye to eye, but I don't always necessarily agree with her approach per se. Um, but I always agree with her integrity, um, her conviction and just her willingness to listen to the people and make decisions based off of that and that alone, you know, obviously mixed with her integrity and conviction, but she listens to the people and if she feels like you're not going to be represented in that debate, she won't participate. That's just, that's literally how she is. I'm fine with that. I think America's fine with that too. Hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you like that segment of Mikasa Sukasa. Also, you can help us upgrade the studio and take this show on the road to cover the on-the-ground politics that you love by clicking on that GoFundMe link in the description and donating literally anything. Anything helps. Also, you can follow us on Rockfin on Twitter, and on Facebook as well. And hey, more than anything else, people, always remember, find your balance. Peace.